Alrighty, welcome back everyone. So if you just came from part two, you're probably still in awe at the elegant solution I just presented to you because I'll be honest, I was like, this is genius whenever I, I first saw it. Um, and so yeah, so basically what I want to do is now apply this genius to our actual circuit, right? We're going to we're going to steal from whoever invented this and we we're going to we're going to harness its power and we're going to use it for our own which we'll call it noble purposes, right? We're we're trying to make a perfect power supply here. So how how do we take this knowledge and apply it to our circuit? Well, let's just follow the same process that we did in the example problems that I laid out, right? Um, so yeah, so let's take a look at our circuit, right? So the first step, the first problem we're trying to solve is our current limiting problem. However, there's a bit of a twist in this case. If you look at the data sheet, let me pull up the data sheet for the UCC. So this is the electrical characteristics section. Um, actually, that's not the section I missed. Okay, right here, right? If you look at this, the gate drive um, current level, right? So this is the voltage level. This is the current level, right? You have continuous gate current, uh, current sources. So this is where I said, look for the source, source current capabilities of your driver. And it says it's self-limiting. You're like, wait, what? Remember, that's the problem we're trying to solve is that the current, there was no current limit available. And this would cause our drive pin to get get too hot and bothered, you know? And the engineers who created these chips probably have seen this problem over and over. So like, we're just going to build in, we're going to have a built in solution, you know? Um, so it's, it's, you know, it's like, wow, that's much easier. Right. And I will say, this is a very common thing you'll see on a lot of ICs. At least I don't know when they started implementing this, this feature, but just know it's on the one that we're using and it's on a lot of other ones that I've checked out. So just know, um, your, um, driver pin might have might be self current limiting so that totally solves the first problem for us um in the sense that the problem still exists but the solution has just already been given to us there's there's like an internal resistor or something like that so it's it's internally limited to and in this case it's internally limited to down here i think it's 25 milliamps is what it's limited to um this actually this value is important to know and you'll see later on in our, our solution, right? So problem one is, has been solved for us uh, without doing anything, which is the best way to solve problems if you ask me. So next, um, I actually wanna take note as well though, um, that, well, actually we'll go to the next problem. Um, so next, the next problem we have to solve is the ringing problem, right? So let's go back and take a look at do i have it yeah yeah the ringing problem right so remember we're gonna we're gonna plug our values into this equation and i actually ended up using we've actually already solved this in that example that i used right i solved for the the proper gate voltage the the gate resistance sorry whenever i did this example up here so this, this these values actually are applying directly to our application right so uh, according to this equation the actual values that we would need for a resistor to properly dampen the ringing are somewhere between 5 and 9.8 ohms. So let's take a look at, so notice, uh, let, let's go back to this circuit, this one right here. So note, for this, in this case, R1 is basically not needed. I actually have it drawn right here. We'll look at this beautiful thing, right? In this case, this resistor is not needed, right? Because even if this was zero ohms, this th this side is the on side is self limiting, so we don't have to worry about that at all. And in this case, um, we have 10, 10 milli ohms coming on the back side, right? So what I want you to kind of realize is that um, let's say so whenever the pin turns off, we're going from fourteen volts to zero volts, right? So that means that. Uh, or whenever the pin turns on, sorry, we're going from zero volts here to 14 volts. So as a result, whenever say you had a 10 ohm resistor in the way to limit the current, um, just understand that this 10 ohm resistor will not bottleneck the current at all. So what I basically mean is that drive pin will, can still easily supply 25 milliamps of current with a 10 ohm resistor in the way, if that kind of makes any sense. If you kind of catch where I'm going with this, um, 
So as a result, we can literally, what I'm saying is we can get rid of both of these diodes and this resistor and just put a resistor there. Um, so let me maybe think of another way to, to say it if it's not 100% clear. Um, so what I'm basically saying is that we can get rid of all of this stuff and literally just go with one resistor, R2, whose job is only to dampen. That is because one, we are self-limiting. Uh, the, the IC, our driver, is, has a self-limiting feature, so we don't even need a current limiting resistor for the on-side. And then two, the value of the resistor that we need to properly dampen will not affect the current uh, carrying capacity of our um, driver, of our, of our driver. Like, like let me think of an uh, example of, so, so let's say we solve for R2, right? And R2 is like a kilo ohm. Okay, or say R R two is like ten k, um, and that's that's the resistance we we need to properly dampen the signal on on uh, whenever VGS tries to go low. In that case, we would need the diode here because whenever V drive um, would try to pull this pin high, the ten k ohm would in fact limit the current to I don't know what it would limit it to, like fourteen milliamps or something like that, right? And as a result, that would affect the rise time of our um, MOSFET, right? Which would be equally as bad. So what, basically what I'm saying is we can maintain, we can, we can't, it will not slow down, this resistor will not slow down the rise time of our signal at all. And it will do the job of damping. So as a result, you can literally just put one resistor in series with the gate driver and that'll do the trick for you. Um, so yeah, like I said, another way is that 14 volts, 10, 10 ohms will not bottleneck the current. So that's like the third different way I can explain it. Uh, hopefully, I'm really hoping that makes sense because it's a little bit, um, just think about it for a while and kind of, hopefully, if you if you have a question, just drop a comment below and I'll be more than happy to, I'll make dozens of videos on this if you guys need. Um, so don't worry about that. Um, so like I said, we can get rid of the diodes and the and send the low high signals on the same line so this is kind of where i was going back also where you that's why you see something like this whenever you realize that oh this this resistor here won't affect so this is a case where uh well maybe it should be i guess it'll be this one it's where the the ringing one um you so this resistance would be really low so this would this would enable us to have a really fast rise time and then say this value was really high, we'd want to we'd want to uh, bypass it basically um, during the on state. All right. So during the on state, a lot of the current can be routed through this resistor, which could be very low. And during the off state, the ringing would just be dampened by this resistor. So I hope that that makes more sense. Um, so yeah. So let's just go back to our ultimate schematic. I'll just show you. Like this is literally what it looks like. Um, you just literally slap a little resistor in there in series with our drive pin and. I chose 10 ohms because it's just because again when you're shopping for resistors it's not always going to equal like i trying to trying to find a 9.84 ohm resistor is just not like that doesn't have it's probably gonna be very difficult if even possible so just go with something that's 10 ohms and boom this this is this does the problem so it's also a little bit counterintuitive um when you look at this because whenever you see a resistor in series you probably first think it's current limiting, but then when you realize this is this this pin has to be at 14 volts. It has to be at 14 volts in order to drive this MOSFET high. So you're probably like 14 volts and a 10 ohm resistor that basically does nothing. Um, and the reason is because it's actually supposed to control damping. So if you ever see any application schematic that does that, know that's what's going on there. Um, and maybe in, even in part four, well, this because there's another there's still another thing we need to do to this to make it work uh, perfectly. Um, so I think maybe in part four, I will mention that. Okay, so, uh, but yeah, this is going to be the end of part three. Um, I really hope this has been a very like helpful tutorial to you guys. Um, I had to spend like a lot of hours trying to read this and it was just frustrating to me. So that's why I made this video is because I wanted to, because I literally just tried to teach you. I had made an attempt at teaching you guys in 30 minutes, which took me like 20 hours to learn. So, um, so yeah, I really hope uh, this here makes all the sense in the world to you. Like I said, if you have a question, uh, drop a comment down below. Um, make sure to please dislike this video. I think that really, I'm trying this reverse psychology thing with the YouTube algorithm, and I, I think uh, I think that'll work. So drop a dislike for me. Um, thank you so much.